we have here is the MSI GP73 Leopard 8RE. Pretty decent looking little laptop here. Nice keyboard and all that business. Got a keyboard. Got a keyboard, baby. We did it. Nothing to worry about as long as you have a keyboard. And this is going to be a full panel on the Again, you see this factory seal here. You can break that. They actually can't give you for that. You can't get in trouble for breaking these seals. In the U.S.? In the U.S. in particular. What you're going to need for this is going to be a plastic spudger, a little guitar pick tool, wheel -a wheel -a wheel and uh, yeah, Phillips head screwdriver. And we've got what appears to be two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. And we'll see if they're all the same size as we go along here. Try not to lose a screw this time. Wow. Jeez. All right. We got the factory sealed screw over here, too. That's actually 12. We'll just go ahead and get out of here with that. You know? So at the moment, as far as I understand, I think it's FTC or whatever. It's kind of cracking down on companies that are doing this whole seal thing that makes it seem like, you know, you're not legally allowed to open your laptop without voiding your warranty and all this other stuff like that. Essentially in the U.S. you have a right to repair. Well, it's always been like that, right? But no one's really done anything about it. It's been one of these like unfair practices where they've been able to claim this forever. And really every company is guilty of it, right? I mean, it's, it runs rampant in the electronic industry. And it makes sense. I mean, you don't really want somebody who doesn't know what they're doing to, to get into your product. Because chances are, you know, they will break something. Basically, all it, all it boils down to is you do have a right to repair. So, technically breaking these seals cannot avoid your warranty in the U.S. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure somebody will. I'm going to take your guitar pick. I'm going to take the guitar pick and start working our way around here. crazy looking. I don't know why they did this design on speakers that 99.9% .9 of people will never see, but look at that. They did this cool little design on their speakers. Uh, let's see over here. This is your power connection, this big beefy thing here. This is your GPU, that's your CPU. This is all one piece, so if you were to remove this, you need to remove all these screws. Again, they are numbered, so do that in order. You'll also need to make sure you unscrew your fans, since these fans are actually, appears to be like a cold solder right to it. Better heat transfer. And of course you've got your two and a half inch. Appears to be a super thick guy, so 9.5 inch. And you've got your... Millimeter. Oh yeah, sorry, millimeter inches. That would be absolutely gigantic, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one foot thick laptop. Yeah, yeah, it's a huge laptop. Don't worry about that. It's a new 9 series from Intel here. It's your CMOS battery and your M.2 slot. It looks like we have Two other M.2 slots here. I don't know, one. Looks like there might be another model of this that actually does have this available. This one does not. So you're gonna have your NVMe slot here. And looks like this might also be NVMe. We'll have to check that out. That's got little heat pads on the bottom. Yep, NVMe or SATA, that's good to know. It's right there labeled, don't even need to really work with it. It's got the heat pads on the back, that's gonna help the heat transfer. You're gonna get faster speeds for longer. Yeah, 
And we've got this other MVME right here, so it's a possibility that you might be able to raid MVMEs in the system. We'll have to test that at some point. And of course, standard memory slots, just like you would see on any other laptop. They go in at 30 degree angle, 40 degree angle, somewhere in that range. And now you just clip right down. I mean, this is the first one we've torn down that I've noticed like a different color aside from black. Oh, this like this keyboard deck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, MSI does this on some of their their stuff. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I mean, as you can see, when we lift it up, the keyboard deck itself is actually like um. I think it's yeah, it's just like a black plastic. No, no, it's a brushed aluminum. And that's, of course, just bonded to this red plastic, and this red plastic gives it this nice little accent line around the edge. Pretty neat, I guess. And we're going to go ahead and remove this, although it appears to be pretty simple. Just two screws. And then you've got your pull tab here, which appears to be, for some reason, secured to the drive. That doesn't make any sense. And we did it. As you can see, Here's this 9.5 millimeter drive, not the one that's almost a foot, which I mentioned earlier. And pretty simple, just goes right back in. Two screws again to secure it. Screws are the same size, you don't need to worry about anything as far as that's concerned. If you did need to do anything with your trackpad, it looks like it's as simple as just lifting up the speaker right here. You just need to unplug this over here. It's kind of a pain to get at it. So. It doesn't really want to work with me for whatever reason. There we go. All right, so yeah, the trackpad on this does not really look like it's going to be easily replaceable. It's actually bonded to the chassis itself. Now, they do this on a lot of laptops. So replacing this pad and have it end up flush afterwards is really going to be a huge pain. It'll probably be easier to replace the whole keyboard deck, which will have the pad hopefully pre-attached. Is that the word I'm looking for? Pre-attached? What is that word? Pre-installed. Pre-installed. Jeez. So, where's the graphics card? Oh. The graphics card is soldered on in this unit. So it's just right here. This is going to be your GPU, and then of course around the edge you're going to have your GDDR. Oh, just that little teeny thing? Yeah, just this little teeny thing right here. I don't think there's anything too crazy in here. I think it's think just it's a, a, like 10, a 1050 50? Ti, yeah. maybe? I believe this is like the first time when there's been a major differentiation finally for MSI laptops where the Leopards are different from the higher end models. They actually stop, I think, at the 1050 series, and you can't go any higher than that. Before, they used to kind of have this crossover. It was kind of strange, but now they've completely separated the two series. Uh, you'll see that the battery here is pretty simply removed. It's just this one screw, and then it's just gonna pull right out. We don't even need to go into that, it's so simple. Yeah, one screw, pull it right out, you're good to go if you need to replace it. Other than that, we're just gonna put it back together. And you are gonna have a lot of connections on both sides, so it's kind of like, getting those connections actually seated in there sometimes can be a little bit of a problem. Make sure you have that. And this side is set it up so you don't need to do that. So yeah, make sure you seat the side that actually has your audio and your USB type C and whatnot first. as well. Good thing to note here, again, MSI being a hero and having the same size screw for everything. Don't need to worry about anything, just screw everything back in. I don't know why they did these little, like, cavities here. I guess that would actually be stronger than what they would normally do. Some sort of, like, molded plastic peg that would go down. Alright, getting more clips. Let's do that. And let everything screw together. You just want to work your way one more time around the edges. Shouldn't be too much of a pain. We'll just check all of our edges. There we go. There's one more that's in quite secure. And we're good to go. Off to the races. Again, this is the MSI GP73 Leopard 8RE.